how to use the rearrangement method to prove the Pythagoras theorem. So we have a right angle triangle and the sides are A and B and C is the longest side. And the theorem says that A squared plus B squared equals to C squared. So to prove this, there are a number of methods. And this method is by rearrangement. Now here is how it goes. Imagine that we have, say, four of these triangles. Suppose that, for example, that I actually cut it out and I have four pieces of this uh, triangular pieces of paper. And I'm going to arrange them in this way. Right, I'll turn one around and put it like that. Okay, with the side A here and the side B there. Now I'm going to turn another one around so that I put it down here with the side B next to the side A and the two sides forming a straight line. Okay, and I'll take another one of this and I'll put it here the longer side A along the B and the side B down here and finally I'll take the last piece and put it down there okay my lines are a bit crooked but you can see that the outer sides form a big square okay and the inner sides here are the C so these are the sides C right, let me shade these areas these are the areas of the triangles so the empty square inside has an area of C squared. That's the area of this. Now, let me remember the outline of, of this square. Okay, so imagine that um, I sketch the outline of the the big square then I'll take let me label label these shaded triangles let me call it one two three four now I'm going to take the, the triangle number three and I'm going to move it up so that it touches the triangle number one okay that's triangle number one I'm going to move three up there so that three is now here all right that two triangles are there next I'm going to take triangle number two and move it down until this corner hits the bottom all 
like that. Now if I if this corner hits the bottom, this edge, the edge B, must come down so that it forms a line with this side, with the side A of this triangle. Okay, the reason is because the distance that this corner would have moved is equal to B. So if that corner moves down by B, uh, uh, moves down, it will also move down by the amount, the distance B. So therefore, this line would meet this line along the same straight line, just nice. That because that's also B. Okay, now I'm going to take triangle num number four, and I'm going to move it to the right until this side meets with that side. That's triangle number four. Okay, and this line, I've not drawn it very well, but this line would lie along the same straight line as the B because in moving this triangle to to the other side this both this corner and this corner would have moved by the distance a which is the same as this so therefore this line this side is now along the same line as the side b so what we have now is that we have two empty squares now this one has an area of a squared and that one has an area of b squared but the outer, the outline of the big square is the same. So the total area here is the same as the total area here. And the areas of the individual triangles, the shaded triangles, have not changed either. So this means that this empty space must have the same area as the total area of that square and that square. And that just means that this c squared area here must be equal to the sum of this area, which is a squared, and that area, which is b squared. And so we have just proven the Pythagoras theorem using this rearrangement method. So let's carry on with the next method. Now this method is supposed to be invented by Euclid. The famous Greek mathematician who wrote did a lot of um, mathematics on geometry let me draw the triangle Let's see let me draw it um, this way. So that that's the right angle. Okay, that's the side A, B, and C. Okay. Now I'm going to think about A squared as the area of the rectangle on the side A, with A as one of its sides. OK. 
Okay, so th that has an area of a squared. And b squared is the area of the square with b as one side. And c squared the area of this square. So we need to prove that the sum of those two areas is equal to the sum of is, is equal to this big area here. Now in this method we draw a straight line from the right angled corner all the way down through the big square and in this method we want to show that the area of this square is equal to the area of this rectangle and the area of that smaller square is equal to the area of this rectangle so that the sum of those two squares of those two areas would be equal to the area of this big square. So that is the plan. Now let's see how we can do that. Step one, consider this triangle. Now I need some names. So let me call this A, this corner A, this corner B, and this corner C. I'll call this corner D. So I want to look at this triangle, D, B, A, triangle D, B, A. Right, I just think about this symbol to represent the area of this triangle. Now think of, think of D, A as the base of this triangle. Now imagine now that I take I, I can take this corner B right that I hold on to this base DA and I can pull imagine pulling the B until it goes to C so that I form this triangle D, C, A. Now, notice that if D, A is the base, then D, B, A and D, C, A must have the same height because this side and that side are parallel. Okay, Remember that that's a right angle, and this is also a right angle since this is a square. So those two sides are parallel, so therefore the height of this triangle must be the same as the height of this triangle. All right, the height of this triangle would be from C down to the line of DA produced. So therefore those two areas are equal. DCA. Now, I'm going to take this triangle, imagine that it's, it's an actual piece of triangular paper, and I'm going to rotate that piece of paper so that A remains fixed. I'm going to rotate it about this corner A. Now, if I rotate it by 90 degrees, then this C corner would come down to here and the D corner would rotate to there. So I need a name for this. D 
Let me call this P. So this triangle is now rotated to this triangle. Okay, so really it's the same triangle, same sides at the same length, same angles. So therefore, the area of this triangle must be the same, A, B, P. Right, must be the same as the D, C, A. Finally, consider this triangle A, B, P. Take AP as the base, then the height would be from B down to the line PA produced. Okay, so the height would be somewhere there. Now since this line and this line are parallel, if I move this corner to that point here, I need a name for that. I'll call that F. So consider this triangle AFP. AFP would have the set would have this as the height, AF as the height, and that would be the same height as the triangle ABP. If we take AP as the base for both of them. Okay, so therefore the area of AFP must be equal. So now we have finally done what I said I want to do, which is that I've shown that this triangle has the same area as this triangle and therefore since this triangle is half of this square and this triangle is half of this rectangle therefore the area of that square is equal to the area of this rectangle let me give that a symbol so the square d g BA is equal to the area of AF called a Q, AF QP. Okay. Now you can see that the situation between this square and this rectangle would be similar. All we need is to apply the same reasoning for this side to the other side, and then we can show that this square, which I'll call GHI. So that would be, say, BCHI. Area must be the same as this rectangle. I call it R. So that's FCRQ. Okay. And if I add those two up, DGPA is just A squared, right, that's really A squared, and this one is really B squared. So if I add those two up, I get A squared plus B squared equals 2. So this is this, and this is this. So therefore the total would be C squared. And so we have proven the Pythagoras theorem a second time. Okay. We'll stop here and carry on in the next video.